The Kumul Rebellion was a rebellion of Kumul Likugas who conspired with Hui Chinese Muslim Zhen Ma Zhongying to overthrow Jin Shuren, governor of Xinjiang. The Kumul Ligas were loyalists of the Kumul Khanate and wanted to restore the heir to the Khanate and overthrow Jin. The Kuomintang wanted Jin removed because of his ties to the Soviet Union, so it approved of the operation while pretending to acknowledge Jin as governor. The rebellion then catapulted into large-scale fighting as Khotan like Kugha rebels in southern Xinjiang started a separate rebellion for independence, in collusion with Kyrgyz rebels. Various groups rebelled, and were not united, some even fought against each other. The main part of the war was waged by Ma Zhongying against the Xinjiang government. He was supported by Chiang Kai-shek, the premier of China, who secretly agreed to let Ma seize Xinjiang. Background Gov. Jin Shuren came to power shortly after the assassination of Xinjiang Gov. Yang Zhengxin, in 1928. Jin was notoriously intolerant of Turkic peoples and openly antagonized them. Such acts of discrimination included restrictions on travel, increased taxation, seizure of property without due process and frequent executions for suspected espionage or disloyalty. Jin had Chinese Muslims in his provincial army like Ma Wu. In 1930 Jin annexed the Kumul Khanate, a small semi-autonomous state lying within the borders of Xinjiang. The newly subjected Kumuluk's land was expropriated by the government and given to Chinese settlers. As a result, rebellion broke out on February 20, 1931, and many Chinese were massacred by the local population. The uprising threatened to spread throughout the entire province. Yubaz Khan, advisor at the Kumul court, appealed for help to Ma Zhongying, a Muslim warlord in Gansu province, to overthrow Jin and restore the Khanate. Ma's troops marched to Kumul and laid siege to the government forces in the garrison there. Although he was victorious elsewhere in the area, Ma was unable to capture the city. After being wounded that October in a battle where Jin's force included 250 white Russian troops whom he had recruited from the Ili Valley, Ma withdrew his forces back to Gansu. This would temporarily leave the Xinjiang Muslims to fight Jin alone. Ma Zhongying had a secret agreement with the Kuomintang if he won Xinjiang, he would be recognized by the Kuomintang. Ma's forces committed atrocities against both Han and Uyghur civilians in Xinjiang during the fighting. He conscripted Han and Uyghurs into his army to use as cannon fodder, while all the officers were Hui. The Soviet Union and Sheng Shikai claimed that Ma Zhongying was being supported by the Japanese and also claimed to have captured Japanese officers, serving with his army. Despite this, Ma officially proclaimed his allegiance to the Chinese government in Nanjing, Soviet aid to Xinjiang provincial government. Jin bought two biplanes from the Soviet Union in September 1931 at 40,000 Mexican silver dollars each. They were equipped with machine guns and bombs and flown by Russian pilots. Jin Shuren signed a secret treaty with the Soviet Union in October 1931 that quickly led to suppression of the Kumul Rebellion and deblockading of Kumul by provincial troops on November 30, 1931. Jin Shuren received large gold credit from the Soviet government for acquiring arms and weapons from the Soviet Army and opening Soviet trade agencies in eight provincial towns. Gulja, Chugachak, Altai, Urumqi, Karashar, Kucha, Aksu, Kashka, Yarkand, Khotan. The Kuomintang found out about this the following year and decided to openly back Ma Zhongying in his war against Jin Shuren. Ma was officially appointed commanding officer of the 36th Division by the Kuomintang government in Nanjing. Asked to intervene against Jin on behalf of the Turkic population, Ma readily agreed. Separate Ughur Uprising A separate Ughur Uprising at Khotan in southern Xinjiang occurred. 
These Uggas were not like the Kumul Uggas, who only wanted the Kumul Khanate restored and Jin Shurin to be overthrown. They were led by Muhammad Amin Bufra and his brothers Abdullah Bufra and then Ur Ahmad Jan Bufra. These rebels wanted total independence and hated both Han Chinese and Chinese Muslims. Their leader, Sabat Damullah Abdul Baki, called for the expulsion of Chinese Muslims in a proclamation. The Tangans, more than Han, are the enemy of our people. Today our people are already free from the oppression of the Han, but still continue live under Tangan subjugation. We must still fear the Han, but cannot not fear the Tangans also. The reason, we must be careful to guard against the Tungans, we must intensively oppose them, cannot afford to be polite. Since the Tungans have compelled us to follow this way, Yellow Han people have not the slightest thing to do with Eastern Turkestan. Black Tungans also do not have this connection. Eastern Turkestan belongs to the people of Eastern Turkestan. There is no need for foreigners to come be our fathers and mothers. From now on we do not need to use foreigners' language or their names, their customs, habits, attitudes, written languages and etc. We must also overthrow and drive foreigners from our boundaries forever. The colors yellow and black are foul, they have dirtied our land for too long. So now it's absolutely necessary to clean out this filth, take down the yellow and black barbarians. Live long eastern Turkestan. This rebellion became entangled with the Kumul rebellion. When a Chinese Muslim and Uyghur army under Marjakang and Timur Beg marched on Kashgar against the Chinese Muslim Dao Tai Marshal Wu and his garrison of Han Chinese troops, Marshal Wu began to panic and started raising Kyrgyz levies under Osman Ali under the city. The Kyrgyz were not amused at how their rebellion was crushed the previous year by Marshal Wu, and now he wanted them to defend the city. They defected en masse to the enemy. However, Marjakang also entered into secret negotiations with Marshal Wu. He and his troops defected to the Han Chinese garrison in the city. During the Battle of Kashgar the city changed hands multiple times as the confused factions battled each other. The Kyrgyz began to murder any Han Chinese and Chinese Muslim they could get their hands on, and fighting broke out in the streets. Timur Beg became sympathetic to the pro-independence rebels of Muhammad Amin Bufra and Sabat Damullah Abdul Baki. While Marjakang proclaimed his allegiance to the Chinese Kuomintang government and notified everyone that all former Chinese officials would keep their posts, Marjakang arranged for Timur Beg to be killed and beheaded on August 9, 1933, displaying his head outside a Vidkar mosque. Mass defections Mass defections occurred on all three sides during the rebellion. Marjakang and his Chinese Muslim army were originally allied to Timur Beg and his Uyghur army while marching on Kashgar. Marjakang and his army, however, defected to Muslim commander Marshal Wu and his Han army and fought against Timur Beg and the Uyghurs. The Kyrgyz levies under Osman Ali were originally allied to Chinese Muslim commander Marshal Wu and his Han army. But they defected to Timur Beg Zuggers at the same time Marjakang defected to Marshal Wu, Han Zhen, Zhang Pi Yuan and his Han Exhanese ILI army originally fought for the provincial government under Jin Shuren against Ma Zhong Ying. However, Zhang Pi Yuan and his Han army defected to Ma Zhong Ying and his Muslim army in 1933 and joined him in fighting the provincial government under Sheng. Shikai and the Soviets and White Russians. Kojiniers and his Kumu Likughar army defected from Ma Zhongying's side to the provincial government and the Soviets and received weapons from the Soviets. Ma Zhongying returns. Ma Zhongying returned to Xinjiang in 1933 to continue the war. Ma used Kuomintang Blue Sky with a white sun banners in his army and Kuomintang Blue Sky with a white sun armbands. He himself wore a Kuomintang armband and a 36th Division uniform to show that he was the legitimate representative of the Chinese government. 
Kumul was easily taken, as were other towns en route to the provincial capital. Sheng Shikai's forces retreated to Urumqi. Ground was alternately gained and lost by both sides. During this time Ma's forces acquired notoriety for their cruelty to both the Turkic and Chinese inhabitants, destroying the economy and engaging in wholesale looting and burning of villages. Once seen as a liberator by the Turkic population, which had suffered greatly under Jinshuren, many Turkic inhabitants of the region now ardently hoped for Ma's expulsion by Sheng Shikai, and an end to the seesaw military campaigns by both sides. Ma also forcibly conscripted Uyghurs into his army, turning them into infantry while only Chinese Muslims were allowed to be officers. This led to outrage among the Uyghurs at Kumul. Meanwhile, the Han Chinese commander of ILI, Zhang Pi Yuan, entered into secret negotiations with Ma Zhongying, and the two joined their armies together against Jin Shuren and the Russians. Huang Musung, native of Kumul and a pacification commissioner from the Kuomintang government, soon arrived in Urumqi on an ostensible peace mission. Sheng Shikai suspected him of conspiring with some of his opponents to overthrow him. Sheng turned out to be correct, since the Kuomintang secretly ordered Ma Zhongying and Zhang Pi Yuan to attack Sheng's regime in Urumqi. As a result, he executed three leaders of the provincial government, accusing them of plotting his overthrow with Huang. At the same time Sheng Shikai also forced Huang to wire Nanjing with a recommendation that he be recognized as the official Tupan of Xinjiang. Chiang Kai-shek sent Luo Wenigan to Xinjiang. Luo met with Ma Zhongying and Zhang Pi Yuan and urged them to destroy Sheng. Ma Zhongying and Zhang Pi Yuan then began a joint attack on Sheng's Manchurian and White Russian force during the Second Battle of Urumqi. Zhang seized the road between Takeng and the capital. Sheng Shikai commanded Manchurian and White Russian troops commanded by Colonel Pa Pengat. Ma and Zhang's Han Chinese and Chinese Muslim forces were on the verge of defeating Sheng when he requested help from the Soviet Union. This led to the Soviet invasion of Xinjiang and Ma Zhongying's retreat after the Battle of Tutung. Kamal Kaya Effendi, a former Ottoman Turkish military officer who was Ma Zhongying's chief of staff, was captured by Soviet agents in Kumul in 1934, but instead of being executed he was made commissar for road construction in Xinjiang, possibly because he was a Soviet agent himself. In January 1934 Soviet troops crossed the border and attacked rebel positions in the ILI area in the Soviet invasion of Xinjiang. Zhang Pi Yuan's forces were defeated and he committed suicide. Despite valiant resistance, Ma Zhongying's troops were forced to retreat from the Soviet military machines aerial bombing and were pushed back from Urumqi during the Battle of Tutung. Soviet assistance resulted in a rare white Russian and Soviet temporary military alliance against Ma. Ma wiped out a Soviet armored car column at the Battle of Daoncheng. Ma's retreating forces began advancing down to southern Xinjiang to destroy the first East Turkestan Republic. He sent out an advance guard under Ma Fu Yuan to attack the Khotan like Uyghurs and Kyrgyz at Kashgar. At this point Chiang Kai-shek was ready to send Huang Xiaowang and his expeditionary force of 15,000 troops to assist Ma Zhongying against Sheng. But when Chiang heard about the Soviet invasion he decided to withdraw to avoid an international incident if his troops directly engaged the Soviets. Destruction of the First East Turkestan Republic the Khotan like Uyghurs and Kyrgyz had conspired to form an independent regime. On February 20, 1933, the Committee for National Revolution set up a provisional Khotan government with Sabat as Prime Minister and Mohammed Amin Bufra as head of the armed forces. It favored the establishment of an Islamic theocracy. Afghan King Mohammad Zahir Shah provided weapons and support to the East Turkestan Republic. 
Sheng Shikai and the Soviet Union accused Ma Zhongying, a Muslim and ardently anti-Soviet, of being used by the Japanese to set up a puppet regime in Xinjiang, as they had done with Manchukuo. Sheng claimed that he captured two Japanese officers on Ma's staff. However, not a single claim of Sheng's could be proven, and he did not provide any evidence for his allegations that Ma was colluding with the Japanese. Ma Zhongying publicly declared his allegiance to the Kuomintang at Nanjing. Ma himself was given permission by the Kuomintang to invade Xinjiang. Western traveler Peter Fleming speculated that the Soviet Union was not in Xinjiang to keep out the Japanese but to create their own sphere of influence. The Chinese Muslim forces retreating from the north linked up with Ma Zhakang's forces in Kashgar allied themselves with the Kuomintang in Nanjing and attacked the TIRET, forcing Niyas, Sabat Damola and the rest of the government to flee on February 6, 1934, to Yangi Hisar, south of the city. The Hui army crushed the Uyur and Kyrgyz armies of the East Turkestan Republic at the Battle of Kashgar, Battle of Yarkin and Battle of Yangi Hisar. Japanese attempt to set up a puppet state. The Japanese invited an Ottoman prince, Abduk Erim, and several anti-Ataturk young Turk exiles from Turkey to assist him in setting up a puppet state in Xinjiang with the Ottoman prince's sultan. All of the Turkish exiles were enemies of Turkish leader Mustafa Kemal Ataturk. Mustafa Ali, the Turkish advisor to the Gaz in the First East Turkestan Republic was anti-Ataturk. Muzan Kapanoglu was also anti-Ataturk, and they both had pan-Turanist views. Mahmoud Nadim Bey, another of their colleagues, was also an advisor to the Akhur separatists. The Turkish government under Mustafa Kemal Ataturk reacted angrily at this plot and the Turkish embassy in Japan denounced the Japanese plan to create a puppet state, labeling it a Muslim Manchuko. Ataturk referred was not interested in Panturanism due to the numerous problems the young Turkish Republic was dealing with and did not want the Ottoman royal family to try to create a new monarchist state to undermine the Republic of Turkey.